Most people use AI video generators like a slot machine. Generate, hope, regenerate, hope you finally get the right output again. But what if you could actually direct these tools? What if you could tell them exactly what camera movement you want and get it? Well, that's what this video is all about, is I teach you how to turn the lottery into a tool you control. And that control is vital if you want to use AI image or video in any commercial or frankly creative context. And so to help give you that control, I'm going to show you how to go from any single starting image and turn that into any camera angle you want using AI tools like Nano Banana. Furthermore, I'm going to show you how to apply that same technique to AI video and not just from a camera angle prompting sense, but from a first frame, last frame sense, giving you the maximum amount of control when it comes to AI content creation. And I'm also going to give you access to my AI prompt library, which has over 40 video and camera angles, as well as prompts and output examples. So you can go ahead and apply these techniques to your content. We got a ton to cover, so let's hop into it. So the first and the most important thing you must do is establish a foundation image. The foundation image isn't just the starting image or starting frame. This is the image that is going to influence every single follow on image, every single follow on video for the rest of your project. This is where we're going to define the main character. This is where we're going to define the aesthetic, the vibes, the theme. It all spawns from here. So you must get this right. And so to get this right, you must know your vision. What are you actually trying to create here? Well, I was thinking some sort of female Viking, you know, in the woods, snow, gritty aesthetic. And that's what I got here, right? Hyper realism. I have my female Viking character. It's gritty. It's dark greens, whites, grays. This is perfect for me. So here's the prompt I use to create this foundational image. Don't get too caught up in the prompt itself. What you really need to do is you need to go to AI. You need to go to something like mid journey, go to Pinterest, find some inspiration and then head back to AI and have it give you a bunch of different prompts that you can use and iterate upon till you get a foundational image you like. So you've created your foundational image and now it's time to move on to step two, which is creating different variations of this image, which we will eventually use as starting frames for our videos. But how do you do that? How do I go from this image to this image or this one or this one while maintaining not only character consistency, but scene consistency, the vibes, the aesthetic, everything has to be the same or else we lose touch with where we started. And that's what gets you AI slop or really poor AI videos. How do we do that? How do we maintain all that? Well, the answer is with proper prompting. And this is where most people get tripped up. And this is where this prompt library comes in that I'm giving to you for free. So you can get this by heading to the pinned comment. Just go to my free school and then go to the prompt library and you will see a link to this air table. Now, what this is, is this is a crutch. This is an aid to help you prompt your way into different shots. Because the problem with most people, and this isn't just when it comes to AI content creation, this is like AI in general. Like this also applies when you're doing like AI agents and automations and trying to create certain apps is if you aren't technical, or in this case, if you're not creative, you don't really know what you don't know. You don't know what the shots are. You don't know how to even describe them. You kind of have an idea in your mind of what you want, but your inability to articulate it to AI is what stops you from creating strong AI images. But this prompt library helps alleviate that because I have over 40 different shots, both for actual still images, as well as camera movements to help you figure out what you should write and what you should be looking for. And when it comes to still images, I have examples that show you what the end result should look like. Now, if you had to interface up here, you can actually go through it and kind of see what I'm talking about. So for example, this image right here, this is with a Dutch angle. Now, how would you necessarily describe this if you didn't know what a Dutch angle was? Well, you'd probably say something in the lines of like, I want it canted, I want her in the foreground, I want the background to be sort of soft focus, and that would be correct. Or you could just write Dutch angle and get it right every single time. Because when it comes to Nano Banana Pro, it has Gemini 3 in the background. When you tell it Dutch angle, it knows what that is. It has its own internal training data, and it's going to give you exactly that instead of relying on you to then explain what a Dutch angle even is. This applies down the line for all these things. Same thing, like a very simple one, like a macro shot. If I just say macro shot and tell what I want the macro shot to be, it's going to do this. It's going to make my prompts simpler and actually way more effective. So let's say I was inside of the database and I like the bird's eye view picture that you see right here. Well, what you're going to do, is you're going to go to bird's eye view. You're going to go to the prompt example. You're going to copy this prompt 
and then you're gonna go to your image generator of choice. Now, I highly suggest you use Nano Banana Pro here because it is the best AI image model on the planet right now for doing these sorts of edits. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paste in that prompt I gave it, and then I'm also going to give it that foundation image. So you see right here, I've inputted the foundation image, right, as a reference image, and the prompt is very simple, right? Directly copy-pasted was direct overhead, bird's eye view of image one, right? It already knows that's the reference image, standing in the snow, top-down angle showing your shadow stretching on the white ground. Now, if you had a different foundation image, right, it wasn't in the snow, right, you would change that, but the rest of it would essentially stay the same, particularly direct overhead bird's eye view of image one. Now, you will notice how simple this prompt is, right? I don't go into detail about lighting. I don't like rehash the fact that it needs to be ultra photorealistic, 4K, 8K, whatever. It knows that, right? It knows it based on the reference image, okay? You can add that information if you want, but it knows it's supposed to keep like everything the same with the reference image. That's why the foundational image is so important because it's doing the heavy lifting when it comes to describing, you know, the tone, the scene, the detail, the shadows, all that right? That's why the foundational image is so important. And for those of you who have used mid during the past, this is essentially the same as like adding an S ref. Okay. This is the reference. It understands that and it's going to execute it. And here's a look at that exact image it created. Now also mention real quickly, I'm inside of Higgs field doing all this stuff, but you can do the exact same inside of Gemini or AI studio. And that flow is how you take a single foundational image and turn it into essentially an infinite amount of variations while maintaining character and aesthetic consistency. And you can see it repeated again right here, foundational image on the left. This time it's a high angle shot, right? There's a little bit of verbiage about looking up towards the camera and snow falling, but ultimately a very simple prompt and the foundational image does all the heavy lifting. So the limit does not exist when it comes to taking that starting image and turning it to an infinite amount of variations using Nano Banana Pro. The prompt library is a great start for doing that effectively, but it isn't exhaustive. And ultimately, it really just comes down to your imagination. So we knocked out our first two steps. One, we created our foundational image, which sets the tone for everything. And two, we created essentially an infinite amount of variations based on that foundational image that we can now start turning into videos. So let's talk about the video creation process. First of all, what sort of tools are we gonna use? Well. My suggestion these days is if we are going for something cinematic, we really want to lean on VO 3.1. And there's two versions of VO 3.1, right? There's VO 3.1 and then there's 3.1 fast. I tend to use 3.1 fast because A, it's faster and B, it's way cheaper. And C, the difference between the two is pretty minimal. Now, not only is 3.1 high quality, but it also gives us the option to do start frames and end frames, which again gives us more control, which is what we are always fighting for when it comes to AI content creation. Now, first frames and last frames are exactly what they sound like. They're gonna be the first frame and the last frame of the video we create. So we can control how it starts and how it finishes. What happens in between is a product of A, the prompt, and B, the AI video generation model itself. Now, sometimes all we really need is a first frame. Like you see in this video here, right? I just kind of wanted a scene where it slowly zooms in on essentially this macro shot of her eyes. Right, we've all seen scenes like that in movies before. So something like A, a really good first frame and a very simple prompt like slowly zoom in does the job just fine. There are times when we need more than just a first frame. I'm also going to need that final frame. A great example is when you do videos that require some sort of focus shift like this one. Right, very simple scene. But to go from this blurry image to this clear image of the woman, especially one that has a ton of detail, right? We see with kind of the mud on the face, requires both. If I were to just do the first frame, it would be a disaster. And here's an example of that. Right? Notice how this woman at the end is not like our foundational image at all. Because what happened? Well, we gave it the first frame, right? This is perfect. But if you don't give it a last frame and you're telling it to, hey, just come up with the Viking woman, well, it's never going to be what you want, right? That's an instance where a final frame gives you a ton of control you just cannot get otherwise. Now let's talk about the prompt for this video, how I came up with it and what your workflow process should be when it comes to generating prompts 
for videos where we are using a starting and ending frame. Now, obviously the prompt library is still nice here. I have a number of different movements for video. 21 through 40 is all video based, right? I'm showing you things like static, dolly in, dolly out, handheld bullet time, tons of stuff. But you have to get a little more advanced when it comes to first end frame prompts. So here is how you should approach it. You're gonna go to your favorite AI. In this case, I'm using Claude. I use Gemini sometimes too, ChatGPT is okay. You're gonna give it the first and last frame. So I gave it first frame, I gave it the last frame. And it's very simple. You're gonna say, hey, give me a text prompt for an image to video generator that moves from the first frame to the last frame. That's it. If you wanna add more to it, like let's say you have a specific sort of like camera technique you wanna include, add that as well. But by doing this, this will give you a solid prompt that you can work from. And so you can see what Claude gave a slow cinematic rack focus pull. Again, that's a specific type of camera movement that just don't know if you don't know. And then it goes into more and more detail. But this is a great place to start when you're just kind of like confused and you don't know how to prompt a specific scene. And that's the same exact process we use with this video, first frame, last frame, and a prompt I got from AI. And so with that, you actually have all the tools and frameworks to create any sort of cinematic AI video you want. You understand how important and how to create that foundational image. You understand how to use that foundation image to create an infinite amount of variations while maintaining character and scene consistency. And now that you've seen step three, the video creation process, you understand how that all comes together to give you full control in how the video scenes actually play out. All that's left for you is figuring out what you wanna create and how to stitch them all together. So this is where I'm gonna leave you for today's video. As always, let me know in the comments what you thought. Check out the prompt library inside of my free school, tons of other AI tools there as well, and I'll see you around.